So the first 25, again, is, is uh, where Paul says, now concerning. And so he's probably looking at that letter uh, that the Corinthians uh, wrote to him. And he begins to answer this question. And, and the question really is, it, Paul is going to try to convince or persuade uh, young people or, uh, or older people, too, to remain single. Now, notice uh, some things here. He says, why stay single? Well, we looked at it uh, last week. Uh, and we looked at at least three reasons. Okay, we're going to look at the fourth one tonight. Uh, first of all, in verses 25 through 27, he says, uh, now concern, he said, verse 26, I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress, I say that it be good for a man so to be. Meaning single, he says this present distress, uh, thinking about persecution, uh, affliction, suffering, and Paul saying it would be better if uh, you would be single. Notice in verse 28, here's the next reason. But, and if you marry, thou hast not sinned, and if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned, nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Now, remember that singles cult was there. They are saying that being single is more spiritual, and, uh, and so that's affecting the, the, the idea of marriage, uh, thinking, well, if you're married, you can't be very spiritual, and Paul's saying, no, no, whether you're single or whether you're married, uh, both... Uh, Aspects have benefits, both, have, both aspects have uh, trials, okay, but God's grace is sufficient. But, he says, here's another reason now why you should stay single. Verse 28, it says, uh, nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Now, when you think about married, marriage and marriage couples, uh, uh, marriage adds responsibilities, it adds difficulties, um, we, we, we talk about being f one flesh in, in, in uh, uh, husband and wife, but you see there's becoming one flesh in practice. That's a little different, isn't it? After so many years, you would say, well, uh, I think it was Kathy was doing something the other last week about how, how well she knew me, and she was going down a list of things, and she was putting these things, and she had them on pretty good, you know. Well, she knows me. Well, the idea is, Paul says, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. Uh, the merging of two minds, the merging of two hearts, uh, uh, men and women coming together. He says, I would want you to be spared of this trouble. It's not, uh, you know, it does, it's not that the Lord doesn't use those trials, right, in, in marriage life. But he says, I would spare you that you would not have that type of trouble. Now, it's like sometimes he said, well, it's hard enough to deal with one person. Dealing with two people is, 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 is a compound, but God's grace is sufficient. So that was the second reason. Trouble in the flesh. Third reason, we see in verses 29 through 31. But this, I say, brother, the time is short. And so, um, he, he's saying that, that uh, ultimately, the return of the Lord. The Lord is going to come. And they, verse 31, and they that use the world, this world, as not amusing it, for the fashion of this world is passing away. Ultimately, the Lord is coming again. And Paul said, it would be more advantage to you, uh, since time is short, that, that we would live in the light of the second coming. Would the Lord, could the Lord come tonight? And so we realize that we, we are to serve the Lord with all our heart, but he says, since time is short, uh, it, it would be better to be single. Um, but also, he says here in verse 31, um, sometimes we think about, well, um, we're in the last days and things are going on, um, you know, things are getting worse, uh, you know, apostasy is abounding, uh, days of Lot, days of, of, uh, days of Noah, and there's coming a great change. Remember, the, the, this world is slated for judgment. This world is slated for a great change. Peter speaks of that, and he says, so time is short. Um, like I mentioned last week was that, you know, make sure that you're storing your treasure in heaven. <laughs> Don't put your, all your eggs in one basket down here. You know, there's things we'll realize that, you know, we need to be responsible, we need to have jobs, we need, you know, all these blessings that God gives up to us. But, but remember, it, time is short. And so Paul says, that's another reason uh, that we should uh, stay single. 
Now, the attitude of the Apostle Paul, now look at verse 27 for a minute. These, we, we mentioned these verses like, what, what, what are you saying here, Paul? Yeah. Are you being a little extreme here? Uh, are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. He's not talking about divorce or separation. He's just saying, uh, it, it's, it's like, be content where you're at. If God can give you grace to be single, be single. <coughs> if God is giving you grace to be married, be married. But remember, okay, the idea is that for this present distress, and there's trouble in the flesh, and time is short, all these factors, okay, he says, we can meet the Lord tonight in, in the air. Uh, look at verse 29. Again, his attitude. Uh, but this I say, brother, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives as, be as though they had none. What are, you, what are you saying, Paul? This is this is extremist, you know. No, he's just saying, that in the light of, of the present distress, in light of, of the second coming of Christ, in light of the persecution, not only singles, but, but, but couples, we, we have to be ready for the Lord's coming. Now, maybe we have lost that attitude in our day. He goes on to say, And they that weep as though they weep not, and they that re rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they, and they that by as though they possess not. And so Paul is, is basically saying, we're pilgrims. We're strangers. Um, we're on our way, as, as Christian was, to the celestial city. You see, and Paul is saying, you know what, it would be easier for you to make the journey alone. Now we understand that Christian, for example, came along and there was hopeful. And there was always a, you know, a uh, you know, fellow Christian marching on to Zion. Uh, but Paul is giving us these reasons to be single. And now he's answering the question, okay, now concerning virgins, um, about this part of singleness. Now let's go to the fourth reason, okay? That's where we find in verses 32 to 35. Uh, again, it's a response to verse 31. Look at verse 31 and verse 32. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away, but, notice, contrast, so they're connected, the fourth reason is connected to that, but I would have you without carefulness. What is this word, what is that idea of carefulness? Now first of all, we have to kind of go back to verse 31 and say, well, what does it mean to uh, abusing the world? Abusing the world. Well, the idea of abusing has the idea of overuse, or misuse. You know, I think about, oh, this morning we talked about worldliness, and, and that's a constant uh, uh, battle. The, the world wants us to be conformed to its image, its likeness, its philosophy, its opinions, its political correctness. And it's always, you see, the world's pressure never stops. It's 24 7. Always trying to conform us into the way of the world. And, and, and sometimes, like James says, he says, the adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And that's pretty strong words. James 4, 4 and 5. Now you kind of think, well, what abusing the world, and and um, we we see that the world is is uh, uh, programmed or pre-programmed pre to 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 for uh, to gratify the flesh and the lust of the flesh and everything we see is the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. And so the world is working on uh, entrapping us and and uh, getting us to compromise. Um, you see, they want us to fraternize with the world in order for us to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Think of that for a minute. The world, you know, it's okay to be a Christian, but, but don't be uh, a zealous on fire for Christ kind of Christian. You know, you know maybe, uh, you know, Lot was not so bad. You know, he, he was there in that city, and he was a witness, and he was a judge there. And, and uh, you know, he still witnessed for Christ. And so sometimes we fraternize we, with the enemy, and we kind of look at, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing, and, 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 and that's, that's the way the world is. And sometimes we, we wake up, we realize, how how do I get this, in this spot being a friend with the world? You see, 
You know, when, when the devil said to the Lord Jesus, he said, all these things, Matthew chapter 4, all these things I'll give to you. He showed, he came, went, took him to the pinnacle, right? He took him to the mountain. And he said, look, look, look all the glories of all these nations, all the things, all the things of this world. He says, I'll, I'll give them to you. You just bow down. Isn't that what the devil does? Just bow down and worship me. That's what the devil says. Isn't that what the world says to us every day? So we realize that we're in the world, we're not of the world, but there comes a time that we, where we abuse the world. Uh, we get like the uh, thorny ground hearers, you know, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word. We're not as profitable, okay? I like uh, Dr. Silas, who used to say, he says when about salvation, he would say, he says, uh, children, be saved. And then, and then he said, well, the children grow up and, and they, they, well, they want to have to go to school and college. And then, and then say, well, after I go to school and college, then I'll get saved. And, and Dr. Silas would say, well, after that, well, then, no, no, after that, I have to have a house. I have to have a job. I have to have a profession. And, and then by that, he would say, by that time, you know, that I, I'm too old, uh, you know, isn't that how fast it goes? But notice the excuses that we make sometimes. And, and this is what Paul is saying about abusing the world. You see, God will give us, gives us all things richly to enjoy, right? That's what he says there in 1 Timothy 6, 17. Let me read that to you. Charge them that are rich in the world, that they are be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who give us, us richly all things to enjoy. And that's true, he does. But see, in the last days, they said that they would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. All this in the sense of, you know, let's, let's be in the world, let's uh, be profitable, God will bless us, God will, but see, God will give more through us than to us, but sometimes we just kind of, you know, settle down and, and uh, we get, we get uh, uh, full of possessions and uh, covetousness and, and things like that, and we, we lose sight that we're just passing through, we're just pilgrims and strangers. So Paul says here, uh, he says, and they that use this world. See, we're using this world, right? We're using it to, in a sense, it's, help, it's not going to help us on to Christ, but in a sense, we're, we're in the world, we're passing through, and, and we're, we're heading towards Zion, and uh, we're in the world, we understand the world's philosophy, the world is full of wickedness, it is it's not going to get better, it's slated for judgment, but God is going to use the world to, uh, try, to bring trials and testings and to conform us to the image of Christ. But he says there, the, and they that use the world, whether it's, uh, well, God's going to give me a good job. That's okay. God is going to give me a good job, but I have to live in the world, and I make sure the world, do, the, the job doesn't become the idol, right? Or I, I'm going to have the education, or I'm going to have this house, or I'm going to have this, you know. Again, uh, the idea is that uh, for the fashion of this world passes away. The goal that we hear often, and it's a good goal, it's um, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, right, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, another verse that I was thinking of, where Paul says to Timothy, he said, No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You see, the world wants to entangle us. The world wants us to get us sidetracked and get us uh, off the main purpose. And so Paul says, no, no, we are in the world, uh, we're going to use the world, now I'm using it for the fashion of this world passes away. Everything is going to be gone. Are you storing in heaven? Young person, listen, are you storing your treasure in heaven? Are you seeking Christ? If not, uh, you know, it's okay to have all these things, but the Lord Jesus says, remember, our life doesn't consist of the abundance of things that we possess. After a while, what happens? They possess us. And that's what Paul's saying here. But notice how we apply that to this word carefulness. Look at uh, uh, verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. Now what is Paul saying? Well, the idea is the care of the world, or, or the idea is anxiety, carefulness. 
Now, notice what he says there. Let's read verses 32 to 35 again. But I would have you without carefulness. This is the fourth reason for singleness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she, but, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So this word carefulness has the idea of anxiety, or what we talked about in uh, Matthew 13, 22, about the care of the world. The parable of the sower. Remember the seed that fell upon thorns. Well, what happened? The Lord says this, He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become unfruitful. Now, being married, we talked about how that has demands and obligations. Look at verse 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife, and, and vice versa. Uh, the, 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 the husband careth uh, for the wife, uh, the wife careth for the, the husband, and, and, and notice this connection uh, about the care of the world, okay? Now, we're not talking about worldliness. We're talking about a man and a woman, uh, or, or man leading a man leading a wife, uh, having a family, okay? Um, and uh, there, there are, are needs. There are things that you have to take care of. You know, you have, uh, you have a family. You, have a place, you need a place to live. You need to have a job. All those things, and now you have all those extra miles to feed, okay? So here, it, it, it's... Um, there's extra demands, family demands, <coughs> obligations. The husband wants to please the wife. The wife wants to please the husband. And, and, uh, and it's not, again, it's not worldliness that we're talking about. It's just that there, there are responsibilities, obligations. Now notice here. It says, careth for. Careth for. Uh, Matthew 6, 25. Let's, let's turn there for a minute. Matthew 6, 25. This carefulness, uh, the Lord speaks about in, in a different way, not in this matter of a family, first of all, but in a sense of the things of the world. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for the life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink, nor yet for your own body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Go down to verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your statue? And why take ye thought for uh, raiment? And, and again, that take ye thought is that word of being anxious or taking care, or being careful, you see? And, and so the Lord lays the foundation here for just the matter of uh, materialism, covetousness, uh, the things of this world. So in verse 27 he says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they curl not, neither do they spin. And uh, go down to verse uh, 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? Round to verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And we've studied through this, but the idea is that, you know, uh, the Gentile worlds and the worlds around us are, are, are anxious about what we're going to eat and what we're going to drink and what, how we're going to be clothed and how we're going to get along and how we're going to prosper in this world. And, and he's saying, the Lord's saying, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Be without anxiety. Now, you say, well, that means uh, that I should be carefree, or, you know, or, but remember, what Paul's saying is that it's better to be single, that you won't be 
loaded down with this care of the world that you have to provide for a family. You have to provide uh, uh, for, for your children. Uh, you will see why he uses this in a matter of, of serving the Lord. Is it wrong to, to care about uh, a job and care about uh, you know, providing for your family? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, it's, uh, we can go to Proverbs and we can go to other places in the Scriptures. Uh, Thessalonians, the man that does not work, he should not <laughs> You know, does not work, he does not eat. You know, the work ethic that the Christian, uh, the Bible brings to us is very good. Um, but even, even Paul says here, uh, let me give you a verse here. Uh, in uh, uh, 1 Timothy 5.8, he says, 1 Timothy 5.8, But if any provide not for his own, and especially those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and worse than an infidel. And this is in the context of widows, okay? If you don't take care of your, your grandmother, you don't take care of your family, well, how are you going to take care of that? He's talking about physical things. Uh, uh, food, raiment, uh, lodging, medical. He's saying, take care. In spite of, pay back your parents. Pay back, you know, take care of it. And so you need to be concerned with this. This is needful. But he's saying, don't let it, you know, in a sense, don't let it be your your goal, your desire. Don't, let, don't live for these things. Okay? Yeah, the, the Gentile world seeks those and wants those, but he says, first seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put the pressure in heaven and don't be anxious. And that's the idea. And Paul says, don't be full of carefulness. Go back to 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. Carefulness. Don't be full of uh, care of this world or, or, or anxious or, or uh, a burden uh, about how am I going to provide for my family? How am I going to provide for my wife, my children? Um, and uh, Paul says, if you're single, you don't have that carefulness. You don't need to be under that burden. Think of that. You, you have that freedom. Now notice uh, the ideal state there in verse 32. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. He said, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. Isn't it? Well, see, that's, that's all, all of our desire, right, as Christians? I mean, we all want to please the Lord. And we all would like to serve the Lord without distraction, okay? But you see, we realize that the, the state that we're in as we get saved, and, and then if God gives us grace to be single, and, and, and not to burn with lust and, 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 and works this out that we can be single, then, then we have, uh, we can uh, serve the Lord, it says here, in a, in a better way, in an ideal state. Verse 32. Look at verse 34. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now, dear ones, he, he's not saying that marriage is second class, or marriage is dirty or unclean, and or, or marriage, if you're married, you can never be holy or, or dedicated. That's not the case, because we know that's not the case. But Paul is just saying, if you're going to escape the carefulness, the anxiety, the burden of, of caring for a family, caring for a wife, caring for a husband, caring for the things of the world, and having a family, he says, if you don't have that burden and that concern, you can, you can serve the Lord more, in a way, more effectively. Okay? More effectively. Verse 35. Notice what it says there. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that you may attend unto the Lord without distraction. Again, that would be, you know, all of us would like that, right? The root word for distraction there is not to drag about or be cumbered. In a sense, it's preoccupied. There's a burden of care. There's a burden of responsibility. Now, sometimes, uh, I think about how, how the Lord has blessed me. Uh, you know, I have my study. I can lock my door. When my door is locked, everybody knows that I'm praying. 
But there's also that little intercom thing that they beep, you know, George. They beep this little intercom inside the house, and it's part of the phone. And when that beeps, okay, I might be praying. So what do you do? So you see, there's things. You see, there's things that the Lord has helped me having a family that has bettered me. Okay. And, and so I, I, I said, Lord, excuse me, they wouldn't be beeping unless it was an emergency, right, John? <laughs> uh, anyways, but, but the, the idea is, you see, without distraction, oh, I would love just to be, you know, uh, I've I read, uh, I mean, Kathy read a book on, uh, I think it was Sarah Edwards, you know, the life, the wife of Jonathan Edwards, and how many hours did he would spend in his study, George? And how many kids did he have? A lot. But you see, it wasn't like it wasn't like that he uh, you know he was able to serve the Lord without distraction within within the limits of, of having a family and that, that that's special grace you, you got to have special grace to do that but it's possible but Paul's saying if you're single you don't have to worry about this distraction or preoccupation with a burden of care burden of responsibility now Paul's heart is really being displayed here, verse 35. You see, you see, you know, I, I want this for your own profit. You see, he says, verse 35. But if any man think, uh, but this I speak for your own profit. He, he really has a heart for the for the uh, Christians. He wants them to serve the Lord. He wants them to prosper in the things of God. He said, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but like, you know, I don't want to put no guilt trip on you. Uh, I don't want to, uh, no more, uh, no moral obligation, you know, is, is not that you, if you're single, you're more spiritual. That's not true. Or marriage is a drag. That's not true. He's just saying, God will give us grace, whether it be single or whether it be married. But Paul says, I prefer my own state. I like the way I am. Now, some people say Paul was married. I don't know. There's some persons that say that. But Paul's saying here, in 1 Corinthians 7, he says, I like everybody just to be like me. Single and serving the Lord. And these are some of the, the, the uh, he says, this is why I say to you to be single. Now, he says here also in verse 35, about, for, but for that which is comely, okay, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. The word comely means there is a high calling. There, there is a blessedness. You know, we think of uh, those that uh, devote themselves, or, or the widows there in, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, those that, that devote themselves to prayer and fasting and serving the Lord. Young people, listen, there is a high calling for you, and it, and it can be as you serve the Lord without distra distraction. Is there an advantage to being single? Well, yes, to serve the Lord without uh, being divided uh, with, or under the burden of care, concern, or distraction. Uh, to attend upon the Lord. Now again, we all want to do that, don't we? We all want to attend and serve like, like believer priests and, and just stay there. Uh, we, in a way, we all like to be like Mary, right? We like to be there sitting at the Lord's feet and, and, and t soaking in the words and and enjoying the fellowship of the Lord Jesus, but there are sometimes you, there, there's a need to be a Martha too. But see, attending upon the Lord uh, again, we all want that. We want that undivided interest. We want to be like maybe like John, who would put his, uh, you know, it says that John would put his head upon Jesus' breast and draw so close. You know, it says the, the disciple. Uh, that, that the Lord loved, and I believe He loved them all, but you see there was like, John was, was he drew nigh to God. See, undivided interest. Remember, uh, time is short. We need to redeem the time. Remember, uh, attend upon the Lord without distraction. The world is passing away. And what Paul is saying to these young people or, or to these single couple, single uh, people here, older people, he's saying, travel light. Don't have a lot in your backpack. You don't have to be back and bogged down with the cares, okay? Now, again, it's according to God's grace. According to God gives you a gift to be single. It, it is, you have to be, you know, it's a, there's a lot of uh, 
uh, traps. And there's a lot of uh, issues with being single that, that uh, marriage helps. But, but again, redeem the time. The world is passing away. Uh, travel light. Store treasure in heaven. And I just want to kind of conclude this with, what are the benefits of family life for me? Well, think of this for a minute. Um, serving the Lord in whatever area, whatever condition that the Lord finds you in. 1 Corinthians 7, 24. Okay? I mean, so this is the principle. He says, Brother, let every man wherein he is called, therefore abide with God. Abide with God. You see, um, I think as I apply this to my own self, you see, uh, well, are you distracted? Uh, is there a burden in being married? Is there a burden having children, uh, having a wife? All these things, that maybe you don't like to a burden. There's carefulness, there's concerns, there's responsibilities. But I, I believe the Lord helps me uh, through serving my family, from serving my wife and serving my children in order to serve the church better. Now, Paul says, uh, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And I'm not saying that, that every minister needs to be married, <laughs> but there is a lot of times that, that my children and my wife and, uh, and my family situation is, is what has taught me a whole lot about the ministry, about caring for people, uh, leadership, things of that sort, um, having that great uh, privilege of, of uh, displaying Christ and the church between Christ, myself and my wife, and then having children, and, and seeing how God uses my children, sometimes to humble me, sometimes to bless me, sometimes to frustrate me, yeah, for sure, but, uh, but that's all part of family life, right? And uh, that would never be there if I was single. You see, I can go home, and I can go to my castle, right? Surrounded by my loving wife, my children. I'm alone, you know, four walls, with those that love me. Now, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I dread the idea of, uh, of a wife or a woman going to work, okay? Going into the workplace. First, I, I just, you know, and being married, okay? Because it's just there, um, the pressures. Okay, and, and uh, but I see when when I come home, I you know I come to my home, you know I'm away from the world, I'm away from the workers, fellow workers, I'm away from the the world, and, and and yes I come into home, and yes there's discipline problems, and there is this, and and this person did this and that, and Kathy or you know uh, you know I you know the washer broke today, Tom again, you know can you know can't you fix that? But I'm home, you see. I'm in the midst of those that love me and care for me. Even with all the problems, with all the burdens, and whatever it may be, you see. So you have to ask yourself, will marriage help or hinder your service and your calling? For me, it, is, it, it has helped me. It's prepared me. Okay? Again, I'm not saying that every pastor has to be married. Okay? But I think that uh, the Lord has used that a lot uh, in my life. Burdens that every husband faces, this, this idea of carefulness, okay? What are some of them? Maybe you have some, but I, I just wrote some down here for an amount of conclusion. You know, could you imagine being taken away from your family? You see, uh, John Bunyan there, Pilgrim's Progress, he was uh, in prison for 12 years for preaching the gospel back in his time. And uh, in, while in prison, he, he wrote uh, Pilgrim's Progress and some other great books. I've read a lot of John Bunyan uh, books. But, but think of this, being taken away from your family. There, there are other pastors and dads suffering that even today, Brother Mark, isn't there? Pastors and men of God uh, in, in uh, communist countries, in China, Korea, they can't go home to their families. That would be a burden. That's a care. A single person might not have that. You see, sometimes the, the verbal abuse my children hear from the world, 
Oh, Pastor Tom, Pastor Tom, uh, you know he's a bigot, he hates everybody. Or even from the church family sometimes. We get in churches, you know, we've been in a lot of churches, you know, gossip will kill you. Gossip and, and, and brothers and sisters in the Lord and, and uh, there, there. <laughs> And what about, well, you know, what my children here? I could spare them if I was single. How about living on less? Well, that's another, another area, right? But you see, Kathy and I, we haven't, we, uh, you know, when we realized that when God put us together, uh, you know, and God, and God really, in a, in a very special way, because uh, Kathy's used to the ministry. You see, she was raised up in the pastor's home. And when she talked about being in Maine and Pennsylvania and then back and forth and how many times she's moved all the times in her life, Okay, and, and her, her dad ministering and dad being the pastor and leading this church or that church and the people and good and bad, you know. So Kathy is uh, well uh, trained for me. She's seasoned. And so she understands the life of a pastor. She understands that there's times when I, I don't need to be distracted. But also I know that there's nothing more important when someone's knocking on my door and Dad, I need some help. Maybe, maybe with the tire on my bike. Maybe with the computer part. Or maybe with this here. Or dear, the dryer, the washer is not working. You know, uh, the pump went out last. George, you didn't hear that, right? The, the, the pump went out. It was like, um, what day was that? Yeah? It was what? Let's see this. It was uh, it was Sunday. Oh no, it was, it was last week. But it was like. Um, uh, went to take a shower and, and no water. And then we have the backup system where if you, you know, no hose was on, okay. Or just, it was, anyways, I need, I need new hoses actually. Yeah, they leak a little bit, but anyways. So the pump turned off and reset and all that. And that's what it's supposed to do, okay. Well, it never turned back on. And so I went in to take a shower and there's no water. I said, what's going on here? And so uh, I said, well, in the night, uh, I'll just wait in the morning and I'll get up. And I'll reset everything and, and uh, see what's going on there. And it, it never happened. It never turned on. And of course, uh, you know, I know about motors. I know about pumps. I know about run and start capacitors. All these things that I've learned in, in the, uh, you know, my work. And so I figured that well, it's, it's the capacitor. So I went to town and looked for this. And, and I found one in Berwick for 12 bucks and got the pump running just fine. But you see, and said, Lord, I, I'm supposed to be preparing for a message. I'm supposed to be praying. I'm supposed to be studying. Lord, I can't take time to do this. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. And you know what? The Lord gives me grace. I'm not saying be a sluggard. I'm not, you know, I, I, I know my responsibility. I know I, I want, you know, if, if I had my way, I'd be in my study, praying and, and reading and stuff, all day long, Brother Fonz. But I, I know about, it. see, the family is important too. But see, what Paul is saying here, you know, single people, for this present distress, he said, well, it, it would be better if you were single. Now, there's trouble in the flesh, you know. Uh, you know, we were talking about Kathy and I being married for 30 years, and that's to some, you know, to, to uh, Clyde and Sally. Kathy's parents said, that's a you know, drop in the bucket, you know, 30 years. And uh, we're still learning uh, to, to walk together, but there is trouble in the flesh. You know, so there, there's reasons for to be single there. Uh, time is short. Sometimes I don't, uh, I, I like to convey that to young people, you know, uh, but they say, well, I, I like to have a family. I like to have, a, you know, I like to be married. I like to have children. And, and I, I can't say to them, well, you know, be single. If God gives you grace and He gives you the gift of singleness, then if, if, if it's for the purpose of not, you know, advancing your career, okay, but if it's the purpose of serving the Lord and serving the Lord without distraction, and, and you know, there, there, are, there are needs in a church that young people, you can, you can meet. Helping this person, helping that person, doing this, doing that if you were single. And so, yes, time is short, so it's, it would be better if you were single. And this, this idea of carefulness, okay, um, it, it can be, it can be uh, 
quite frustrating, quite demanding, but always a rewarding, isn't it, brother? When we get sick, you know, your families and, and your children, and, and God always, for me, He gives me grace. Notice here in, in verse 28, as we, we kind of just wrap it up, just to some points here. Notice it says, but, but and if you marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Okay, so it's not again not like, well, singleness is, is more spiritual and marriage is a, is a drag or, you know, burn. Oh, no, no, he's saying either way, if God gives you grace, if he gives you grace to be single, be single. Serve the Lord. Serve, uh, that, like it says that we can, it says that they can serve the Lord uh, how he may please the Lord. Or verse 34 is really, really interesting. He says, the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and spirit. Now, that's for the man too. I believe the young man can be holy in body and spirit, but, but that they can care for the Lord and serve the Lord without distraction. So it's not a sin. Now remember, Pastor Tim would, you know, he, he chose to work uh, for many years that I, that I knew him. Uh, and uh, he chose to do that. His profession was painting at that time. And he's a good painter. And uh, we would talk, and, and he, he's an a excellent, uh, uh, you know, he's excellent with his money. Okay, anybody better than Tim, I, I've never seen. He's frugal, he, he's, he's right on money. But he has a reason. He has a reason. He said he, he saved up a bunch of money for, for his kids to have college, and, and they didn't want to go, and things didn't work out. And so he's been funneling some of that money into missions for, for the longest time. For the long, we know that, right? We know that. But see, the thing that with Pastor Tim and I, we'd sit there and he said, he said, one day, Tom, I'm not going to be working anymore. And what he did, what did he say? He says, this verse, verse uh, 35. He says, oh, what a day it would be when I can serve the Lord, attend unto the Lord. Notice that, attend. It's a, it's a good word. It's like a servant. It's like a... a, a Servant coming to the master. I'm waiting for the master to move. I'm waiting for the master to do that. I'm, I'm right at his feet. I'm ready to, like a, like a Mary, like a Martha, okay? But the idea was that we attend unto the Lord without distraction. And Tim said, oh, I can't wait for that day. And, and, and after he quit painting, he retired. He said, I, I think I've, he said, I'm, you know, I think I've gone to heaven. I, I've gone to heaven. He says, you know, I can, I can just be in my study. And I can study, and I can pray, and you know, Sister Betty's there, but he says, I can just, I don't have to go, I don't have to go to work, I don't, I can just pray and study. And sometimes maybe like, like for me, it, it's, you know, I take it for granted, but also I, Tim knew, knew and understood, and you do too, that, you know, I can't just leave my family out. The family is part of the ministry. And the Lord knows that, okay? And so sometimes there's a balance. There's sometimes there's, you know, priorities, you know. Uh, I can't be, and, and dear ones, listen, there's always going to be sacrifice. Well, you had to fix this, you had to fix that. Well, you, you, need, you need to take some time to pray, and that means you, got, you can't sleep as much. You've got to get up early to do this or do that. You see, there's, there's a balance, but God gives us grace. And, and we have to realize that, that whatsoever we do, whether we eat or drink, whatsoever we do, we do all to the glory of God. And it's not a matter of greater spirituality, whether you're single or married. Both have blessings, both have the drawbacks. And may the Lord give us grace, uh, first of all, to be content. Content. Wherever we're at. Young person, listen. Well, uh, I, I desire to be married. Uh, and, we, and young people, listen, we do pray for you. Young ladies, young men, we do pray for that spouse, for that, that right Mr. Right and Mr. You know, you know, we think that's the, you know, the second most important thing in your life is to be married to the right person by God's grace and to serve the Lord together, together. But you see, Paul says, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore, to be content. There's this, you know, waiting on the Lord, oh Lord. Maybe the Lord give you the gift of uh, singleness, and you could say, "Well, maybe I can go down and, and uh, teach like uh, Rachel and 
and Susanna or some things of that sort. I, I still have questions about young ladies going off to missions. I'm sorry, but that's the way I am. But I, I see where they're, they're in a capacity that they can serve the Lord. Or young men. Paul says, For we brought nothing into this world, and is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. He didn't say anything about houses. He didn't say anything about families. But you see, dear ones, we must, whatever we do, whether single or married, we have to always, whatever we're doing, we have to keep our minds on the second coming of Christ. The Lord may come today. What, he, what will He find me doing? Will the cares and affairs of this world, worldliness, let's say, be so consuming? Now, I'm not talking about caring for your family, working hard to care for your family, and, and, and providing the things that every man should do. I mean, I, you know, I... I believe, you know, you work, you provide for your family. You work two jobs, three jobs, whatever you have to do. And, and, and uh, I know the men are like this, like that here. And, 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 but you see, all to serve the Lord without distraction. God will give you grace, whether you're single or whether you're married, and you can do those things that please the Lord in your service to Him. Whether, you know, like... Uh, like, uh, what's her name, Wesley, um, Charles Wesley, and Susanna Wesley, she would, uh, she would cover her head with her apron, and she had a load of kids, right, children? She would cover her head with the apron and say, children, I'm praying now, I'm praying now, don't disturb me. There's grace, there's grace, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your mercy, your goodness. And Lord, uh, to see these, these reasons why we should be single. And Lord, I pray you give understanding to our young people. And uh, Lord, uh, direct and guide them. Show them the blessedness of being single. Show them the blessedness of being married. And, and all things that we might serve you without distraction. We might uh, do those things that are pleasing to you. That as we're in this world, we would not uh, store up our treasures on earth. Be like the world, and, and uh, Lord, uh, no, no, may we be uh, putting treasure in heaven as we serve you and as we serve one another. Uh, Lord, give us grace uh, for these young people especially, and give us, all of us, Lord, and we might do those things that are pleasing in thy sight. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.